Creating a Relative Frequency Table, Lesson 15.2a. Now, before we begin, I want to make sure you understand the difference between a frequency table and a relative frequency table. This top one is a frequency table. So, if people were asked their preferred color of t-shirt and 30 people said blue, that's the frequency of blue. And if 15 people said red, that's the frequency of red. And if five said green, that's the frequency of green. If we add them all up, it is the 50 people that were asked. It's the number of times the event actually occurred. But a relative frequency table, well, that's a ratio or a percent decimal of the times the event occurred to the total number of events. To make a relative frequency table, we can organize the data in a frequency table. Then we can use division to obtain relative frequencies as fractions, which we convert to decimals. Last, we convert the decimals to percentages. So that's the data we're going to use. We have 50 random people were surveyed whether they prefer a blue, red, or green t-shirt. 30 chose blue, 15 chose red, and 5 chose green. Here's the 50 for the 50 random people, the total number of people. We've organized the data in a frequency table. Now that we have our data organized in the frequency table, we write each as a ratio for the relative frequency table. It's going to be the number of times the event occurs, the 30, 15, or 5, over the total number of events, the 50. That's the total. We write 30 over 50 for blue, 15 over 50 for the red, 5 over 50 for the green. And if we add up 30 plus 15 plus 5, it's going to equal 50, and it's over the 50 total. So now we have them written as ratios. We use division to convert the relative frequencies to decimal hundredths. So 30 fiftieths, we do 30 divided by 50, and we get 0 0.6, 0 0.6. We write it as hundredths, so we've got 60 hundredths. Here we have 15 fiftieths, which is 0 0.3, or as a hundredth, it's 30 hundredths. And for the 5 fiftieths, we get 0 0.1, which is 10 hundredths. Now we'll convert these decimals to percents. So here we have the data written in our relative frequency table as decimals, and here we have them written as percents. If we have 60 hundredths, we just move that decimal point over two hops to the right and put in a percentage symbol. Another quick way to do it is we can convert the ratios to percents by multiplying by a common factor to make the denominator of 100. So if we have 30 fiftieths, well 50 needs to be multiplied by 2 to be 100, so we multiply the 30 by 2. It's the common factor, and that gives us a 60, and 60 one hundredths is 60 percent. And we did that in back in sixth grade math, lesson 5.3. If you're a little rusty on that, I can put a link of that in the description of this video. If the sums of the relative frequencies are 1 or 100 percent, we'll know we've converted the frequencies correctly. The total column of a relative frequency table will always be 1 or 100 percent. To obtain a relative frequency from a frequency, we divide the frequency by the total. And the total divided by itself will always be equal to 1. So we've got the frequency total divided by the total, and 50 fiftieths, same numerator and denominator, that's equal to 1. Remember, a frequency table gives the amounts in each cell as the number of events that occurred. A relative frequency table gives the percentage of the total as a percent or decimal in each cell. It's a ratio of the frequency over the total. Okay, we finished this first part of the lesson. We're moving on to 15.2b, creating a two-way frequency table. Keep doing your best. Keep improving yourself every single day. 
and please join me for the next lesson. Bye.